Hey guys, and welcome to my review of the Drevo Durendal Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. This is a fully mechanical keyboard on the budget price end at just $65. In the box you get the keyboard itself, along with an instruction manual, a sticker, and a wire keycap puller with their logo engraved in the handle, which is a nice touch. To start, the overall build quality of the keyboard feels decently solid. The board is pretty heavy and has a very high quality aluminum backplate on the front, along with a high quality plastic on the back. The included wrist rest is a nice size and is made of an acceptable, if not overly slippery, plastic material backed by aluminum which cannot be removed, which may be a deal breaker for those who do not prefer wrist rest at all. In my opinion though, the wrist rest greatly improves the typing experience and creates great ergonomics for this keyboard. On the back of the keyboard, there are 7 rubber feet, including 2 that can be extended to give a bit of elevation to the back of the keyboard. There is also a cable run for cable management, which is definitely a plus. The keyboard itself has a standard full-size layout with multiple media control functions, including useful shortcuts that will open the calculator or a web browser, for example. There is also a Windows Lock option by pressing Function plus the Window key. In the upper right of the board, the Windows Lock, Caps Lock, Number Lock, and Scroll Lock are all displayed with an LED for each. The keyboard also has N key rollover and full anti-ghosting, which are especially a plus for gaming. For the typing experience, this keyboard is fully mechanical and has Otemu red switches, although it also is available in Otemu blue switches, Otemu brown switches, and black switches, which are all similar to their Cherry brand equivalents. Overall, these switches feel really great to type on, and since they are similar to Cherry MX red switches, they are linear with a moderately low actuation force, which I find great for gaming and typing alike. They are also much quieter than something like Cherry MX blues or other blue equivalents. Here's a sound test for you guys. Keycaps on this keyboard are a double shot ABS plastic which makes them feel premium, however the printing for a few of the keys was a bit fuzzy. For lighting options, there are RGB lights under each of the keys which can be addressed either through their software or through functions on the keyboard. If you use the functions on the keyboard, you can use function plus the arrow keys to adjust the brightness and speed of the effects, function plus the delete key to adjust the color of the effects, and function plus insert to cycle through the different preset effects. You can also use function plus print screen to turn off the backlighting altogether. For the included effects, there is a solid backlight multiple pulsing and twinkling effects, multiple reactive effects, and more. This means that if you do not want to download their software, you can still have access to plenty of different lighting effects. That being said, if you do choose to download their Drevo Power Console software, you can gain access to multiple useful features. The software itself is alright and easy enough to get the hang of to use, even though it seemed a bit strange on how it worked at times. First of all, you can select through even more lighting effects and with the hardware shortcuts, and can select any color whatsoever to set the keyboard to instead of just the basic set colors. Not to mention you don't have to cycle through all of the effects to choose which one you want to use. And even though I cannot find a perfect way to address the color of individual keys, if you choose the gaming lighting effect, it allows you to change the color of specific keys, but it did not work perfectly for me. And for example, whenever I tried to set the backlighting for the Z key, it would only light up the X key for some reason. Even though I face these issues, I find it important to say that with more familiarity in the software, there may be a workaround for this issue. It was just not obvious or easy to find for me in the time I played around in the software. Another feature brought by the software is the ability to add macros, which is another useful feature for gaming and productivity alike. The backlighting overall is not too bad on this keyboard with plenty of features, I just wish it was a bit brighter since it is a bit difficult to see in the light, even on max brightness, not to mention every time you switch the lighting effect, it seemed to switch you to half brightness for some reason. In all, I think this keyboard is definitely a great value considering the full size, including a number pad, and the really decent typing experience. The minor issues that I did have had to do with the lighting, which is not a deal breaker for me considering that I usually just end up setting it to a single solid color and forgetting about it anyway. So unless the lighting software imperfections make it not worth it to you, I think this keyboard is a great buy.